Welcome back to my um, shed. Right, this is the next in the series of my shed build. Uh, the last one, if you remember, we actually put the roof on uh, and all the joists, that was all excellent. Uh, hopefully you've seen that video. If not, check it out here. Uh, now, the next stage is obviously to wrap the whole thing in a breathable membrane and then start getting some cladding on. Okay, so I've gone out and bought a massive great big roll of breathable membrane. Uh, it's this stuff. Rhino Vent Ultra. Okay, this actually cost me uh, 90 something pounds. Uh, okay, but it is 50 meters long and one and a half meters wide. So it's wider than I was trying to get. Uh, so I guess we've got to try and start putting this on the outside. All right, so as you can see, the roll's quite big. Uh, the problem is I've got to wrap it all the way around and I might have a little bit of trouble accessing this corner here. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of a dry run, see if I can actually walk all the way around the shed with this. It might fit, it might not. Uh, I'm going to be holding it in place with uh, staples. I'm going to use this Stanley stapler. Uh, I was going to use my nail gun with staples in it, but the shortest ones I could get were too long and they'd end up going through the other side. Right, so let's do my trial run. <laughs> Right, that may have seemed like a silly thing to do, uh, but I'm glad I did it because it's highlighted a couple of issues. Uh, now let me show you, I'll give you a quick try and walk around and I'll show you the couple of the issues I come up against. All right, first of all, this corner, which I thought was gonna be easy, uh, was actually a bit tighter than I expected. Uh, so I've got to get around here. Um, I remember there's a big pile of wood down here, which I've got to move. Then, once I squeeze around here, in the corner. Now this is the issue I've got. The fence actually leans in at the top so this gap is just about wide enough for me to squeeze through. Uh, and also down on the floor here where my electrics are going to be coming into the shed uh, I nearly tripped over that. Okay so these are a couple of things I could just about get around there. It's going to be a bit more difficult but we can do that. Don't tread on the flowers. Right, so I'm just about to start laying this thing on the uh, on the walls. Uh, now, the best thing to do is actually go around the whole thing first and make sure you haven't got any screws sticking out, no screws coming from the inside, make sure there's no sharp edges, otherwise you'll just rip this stuff. Uh, now, it looks like I've got to go around the other way. I was going to go around that way, around the shed, uh, but it looks like I've got to go the other way. And the reason is because there's a, an overlap line and also the instructions say it's got to be coloured side out. Okay, I'm assuming this with the writing on it is the out. Uh, so it does mean I've got to go around the other way. Uh, but that means I've got to do the awkward corner first. But let's get it going and see how we get on. Right, I've got to get this straight to start with. Otherwise, by the time I get all the way around the shed, it's going to be uh, all over the place. Uh, there's a centre line down the centre of the shed here where my two end walls join and it's just falling down yeah look you can see it here okay so i'm going to use that to line up my first bit get some staples in it and then start dragging it around the corner
Right, so I've now got it all the way around the shed. Uh, what I'm going to do now is put some staples in it to hold it all in place, uh, trying to keep it as smooth as possible to the surface. Uh, yeah, let's get stapling. <laughs> Right, so that's the first level uh, on. Uh, now, obviously, I don't need another one and a half meters here, even though the gable end is quite high. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, because this roll is way too heavy to be wielding up and down here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my material first to this height, okay, do a layer all the way around here, and then do the gable ends as a third layer. All right, so I've got to cut this into strips this big. Whew. Right, so I've cut myself a, a, a short piece to go all the way around. This is a lot easier to handle. Uh, probably haven't cut it the best, but uh, it'll be fine. So I think I'll start this from around the front here, go all the way around and then join it up again. All right, let's get some more stapling done. So it's my next layer up now. I think what I'll do is I'll quickly open up this door. Uh, just going to use a normal standing knife, cutting diagonally from the corners. Then all I'm going to do is fold it around, staple it in place. I won't cut off the excess yet. I'll save that till later. Right, so that's the shed now covered in breathable membrane. Uh, the next step is to put the battening on. Uh, I did have a plan of what I was going to do. Uh, let me show you what that is. Right, we're in the workshop here. Uh, now I've got this big pile of uh, old wood here that I was going to use. This is some really thick cladding off of uh, somebody give me this. I was going to chop that into battens uh, like this one here. Uh, but it took me so long to chop these and obviously they're in short pieces, there'd be loads of joins, uh, plus as well this is very blonde wood so I'd have to treat them all. Uh, so that, just chopping this lot up, uh, would take me absolutely hours. 
Uh, so what I've decided to do instead is I've gone to uh, Wix. Uh, it's a Sunday morning, I've spent a full tune and I've just bought some battens. Uh, right, so I'm gonna have to start putting some battens on, ready to put the cladding on. So, back in the sunshine. Right, for the batten in for the top of the gable ends, uh, I'm just going to use this slot, which is the offcuts from all of the uprights. Got to save money. Right, so that's all the batten in on the shed now, uh, including these bits on the gable end. Uh, I used all the offcuts, that worked quite well. Uh, it's all on the front, it's all on the sides. Uh, let me show you around the back because that was almost impossible to do. Right, so I managed to get it all on the back there. God knows how, I could just about get down here and I actually got wedged in at one point. But the battens are on, uh, God knows how I'm gonna do the cladding, but we'll sort it out later. Right, next thing is the corners. Right, so on the corners, I'm gonna try something I've never tried before. Um, I've got a batten on either side, so on the side and on the front here. And the idea is I'm gonna put one of these two by twos on the corner. Uh, and the reason is so it blends in with the cladding. Uh, let me show you what I'm going to try and do. Right, so I've got a batten here and I've got a batten here. And the idea is I'm going to try and put this in the corner like this and then screw it from this side and from the other side. That should give me a big lip there. And the reason I want that is for the cladding. Okay, so that's like that then the cladding will sit here, like this. Okay, so the cladding will finish like that. I'll leave a little bit of a gap for expansion, but uh, that should give it a bit more, a bit of a nice look. Right, let's start drilling some pilot holes in these bands. So it looks like the corners are going to work quite well. Uh, what we've got to do now is start putting some cladding on. Uh, I'm going to do the side first. Uh, I've measured up and I've cut the lengths. Now, obviously the most critical part is the first piece of cladding you put on. Now that's got to be dead level. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to space that out, put that on. I want it about, I don't know, seven mil off the floor so it doesn't soak up any water. Uh, and what I'm going to use for that is a pencil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three carpenter's pencils on the floor because they are about seven and a half mil thick. Okay, they're about 15 mil wide. But I'm going to use them flat on the floor. Uh, I'm going to rest my first piece of cladding on that. Then I'm just going to staple it in place with bread nails. Okay, I will be putting screws in later. Let's get the first one done uh, and then see how it goes.
Right, so it's the first one in place. Uh, so now all I've got to do is put the others on. Right, so I've got this far. Uh, I seem to be missing some cladding on the end and across the front here uh, because I ran out. I didn't estimate it properly, uh, but it's okay because the guys from Doors Heath Timber, that's these guys, they have just sent me some more. So now at least I can carry on. Yeah, excellent service. Uh, check them out, Doors Heath Timber. Right, uh, let's just show you how the membrane works. So as you can see, I've got my cladding on the front here uh, and underneath you've got your membrane here. And basically what it does, it leaves a big air gap. Okay, so any moisture that goes on the front, it's not even going to get to here. And if it does, it will just run down the bottom and then it'll come out the bottom. Okay, so that's what a membrane does. Uh, right, let's start cutting this lot up and get some more cladding done. Looking good. Right, so that's about it. Uh, the membrane's on, all of the cladding's on. All I've got to do now is put some screws in the cladding. Uh, at the moment, it's just held in with brad nails. Uh, the back and the sides have been clad using the old cladding off of the old shed. Uh, what we're going to do now is move on to the roof, but that's going to be for another video. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. It's like hot, but hotter. Stand on your garden. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Oh, hot. Oh, hot.